could swear I was really playing virtual ski ball. Hey. Yeah, let's see how you do under pressure. Oh. So it's finally here, the Vision Pro. And this isn't a video about the Vision Pro, what it can do, what its tech support is. I'm not even gonna put it on because I haven't actually got one. But I want to talk about the impact that I think it's gonna have in the next few years. And because I think it's gonna be one of those products that changes things massively. And I don't think we're ready for how massive that change is going to be. People keep talking, well, you know, there's been VR headsets before. This is, you know, something that's been around for ages. Nobody uses them. They're a very niche thing. It's a gaming thing. But I don't think this is it. And people go, oh, well, you know, it could be a flop. And yeah, Apple's had flop products before. It's had weird products. It's had products that, you know, just haven't worked for one reason or another. And, you know, I've been there for some of them. I've got them in my Apple archive to prove it. But... I think this is an iPhone moment. And I think that for a reason. I remember when I got the first iPhone, I didn't buy it because it was necessarily better than anything else. I bought it because it was novel. I went out on the first day and got the brand new iPhone and it was extortionate. It was really massively expensive compared to what you could buy at the time. And to be honest, other than the novelty of the touch screen, which was cool, and visual voicemail, which was cool, it didn't really do much more than any of the phones that I'd earned before, apart from the fact it was bigger. And that's a weird thing to go through because like, here you were committing a vast amount of money and it was really expensive, that first one. But you were there at the start, you were in at the start because you could see what it could possibly become. And that first one, it didn't sell well. You know, it wasn't a massive success. It wasn't something that everybody had. They were quite rare and still are quite rare. But within a couple of iterations, everyone had one. And they were literally everywhere. When they cracked it with that three, you had the app store, you had the better force touch, you had capacitive touch where, you know, multi-touch and all this stuff. It was so, so clever. The battery was so much better. The camera system was so much faster. And it's just got better and better and better. And I think that is where we are right now with the Vision Pro. I think we are on the cusp of seeing a technology that's gonna change the way that we work. And I think the question that needs to be had now is are we actually ready for it? I'm 43 and that means I'm old enough to remember a period where there weren't mobile phones. Uh, well, you know, mobile phones were bricks. When I got my first mobile phone, it would genuinely, you could put double A batteries in the first one I had if you, if you ran out of, of juice. And the idea back in 1999 that you would be addicted to this, that you'd have the constant, where's my phone? Have you seen my phone? I, thought I, put, I put my phone. The idea that you'd spend eight hours, and some people do spend eight, nine, ten hours a day glued to this. The idea that you'd do that back in 1999 was, was ridiculous. People just looked at you like you were gone out. If you were to go back and say, people will have a phone that is super computer powerful compared to what we have now and people will spend all day glued to it. People will go into restaurants and instead of talking to each other, they'll be glued to their phone. Instead of reading a newspaper on the, on the tube or on a metro, they'll read their iPhone, they'll play a game, they'll play a mindless game like Candy Crush or something like that. They'll go and do that on their phone. You'd have looked at them and gone, that's bullshit. Just get out, go on, go. Because it was lunacy to think like that, but here we are. And you know, you go back 10 years and people talked about wearable computers and people talked about them like they were the next big thing and everyone looked and thought, yeah, yeah. I can't imagine not wearing my watch. I'm not gonna wear a computer. Now, everybody has the watch, you know? And it's something you choose to wear. I wear mine on this hand so I can wear a watch on this hand when I want to. And I go out with this every day because this has all my health tracking details on. It's gamified my fitness. It's gamified by going to the gym. It's done all of those things that I do, it, as well as having my messages on it, as well as being something that I can unlock devices with and all sorts of other bits and pieces. 
it's there. Wearable tech is now a thing. And it only took 10 years from people going, I would never do that. So almost everyone having a, a some form of wearable tech, whether it's the ring, the watch, whatever. And we're now looking at another massive step up. And I think it's really important. I think it's really, and I think it's really clever how Apple are framing this. It's not a VR headset. It's not virtual reality. It's reality, but done better. Oh, that's what they're claiming. Now, you can go and watch a hundred of videos. Go watch Patrick's up here. Go watch Marquez up here. There's some really good ones. Go watch Casey, because he's got something to say about it. There's some really cool stuff that's going on right now, and people are talking about it in a way that, you know, it, it could change the game. But I think that Apple are really clever, because this spatial computing they're talking about is going to evolve, and it's going to evolve really quickly. This current one that's out now you're not going to see in the wild very often. It's not going to be a product that everyone has. It's not going to be a product that is mass market. Because one, it's astronomically expensive. And two, it doesn't do as much as people think it does quite yet. But it's going to be a product that developers are going to take on. It's going to be a product that creators who are looking to do something different take on. And people are going to play with this product. And Apple are going to be looking at what those people do and they're gonna be responding to it. And in a couple of variants of this, as technology improves and battery life improves and the screen technology improves and as Apple shake down and remove the features that maybe don't they don't like or that don't work properly or just aren't being used or utilized by people, it's going to take off. And I tell you this because of this. So this was the phone that I had before I had my iPhone. It's a Sony Ericsson. It did all sorts. It did messaging, it did voicemails, it did everything that I thought a phone should do. Then I got this. This, yeah, this is my very first iPhone. I got this brand new when they were very rare in the UK. You had to go on one network. And to be honest, it didn't do much more than what that one did, apart from having a novel shape, having a novel size. But in a couple of iterations from that, it was wild. Suddenly you had the App Store. Suddenly you had all of this extra functionality built in. It took this from being just a novel device, and something that did everything that the other one did, but was way more expensive, to being something that was in your pocket, in your phone, in your life every single day. And now here we are. We're making movies on these things. We're taking our daily life on these things, and we don't even think about it. But this changed the game. This is where we got. And I think that we are not ready for where spatial computing is gonna go next, because I think that we're gonna see Apple go down the route of maybe having transparent screens. So we do away with the iTech. I think that's probably gonna be gone very soon. I think we're gonna see an app store just explode onto these things. I think we're gonna see gamification of daily life on these things. I think people are gonna do that for habit tracking and all sorts of other things that they can do. And I think this is going to be massive. The question is, are we ready? Are we ready for seeing people with something on their face all the time? Are we ready for the isolation that it could bring? Because we know that these things brought isolation. You know, we've all sat across from a friend or whatever, where it's like they're doing this and they're not paying attention to you. And that's really annoying. Imagine what it's going to be like when it's like this. Hopefully you'll be able to see their eyes properly. You might not necessarily have their attention. So we have to think as a society where we're going. And I think developers and I think creators need to think very carefully about what kind of experience you do. Because if we think of it in terms of an isolating experience, we're going to build things that isolate people. And that I don't think is going to be a healthy thing. And I don't think it's going to make it take off. But I think if we look at it in terms of what it could do to enhance the world around us, to make us more able to interact with people, to make us more able to interact with our work and our, our work lives, I think that is where spatial computing will take off. So if you're buying one today, you're in at the start, I think. I think this is going to blow up. And, you know, don't get me wrong, I am really looking forward to getting one, but I, as, as you'll see in another blog, I'm currently in the process of uh, moving the office over to Barcelona. We need to go buy a load of MacBooks. So I am skint this month. So it's not going to be this month, but I, I, this is a tech I want to get my hands on. I want to go and see what it's all about. And I think that it's going to be one of those things that does fundamentally change the way that we interact with computers. And I think Apple may just have nailed it. 
I'm Neil Evans. I hope you enjoyed this vlog. Please subscribe, please like, and do all the things that you do. And I'll be back another time when I make the video. Bye.